Hey, good evening. It's Wednesday, April 3rd. And welcome back to Everyday Talk 24-7. <laughs> so, so glad you're here. Just a quick reminder, Q&A Friday, this, this Friday, I've got one question that's really good. Spend some time on that, but I probably have room for one, maybe two more, but at least one. So if you want to send one in, please uh, feel free to do that. So Q&A Friday, this Friday. We're going to continue looking at Paul's theme of how do we know God better, more deeply. And I believe the book of Ephesians is written around this very theme. Of what he says in chapter 1, verses 18, 17, 18, and 19, he wants us to know God better and the power that raised Christ from the dead. So we've come to chapter 4, verse 31. We looked last night at don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God. That's a relational thing, not so much just keeping score, but God has opened himself up to us in an amazing show of humility, compassion, and condescension and allowed for there to be a relational hurt involved here. So he says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. And then he finishes this section in, in chapter 4 by talking about specific ways that we can grieve the Spirit. He's taking what's gone on before and combining it. And he's talking about anger. We looked at anger earlier. There's a righteous anger that results in peace and trust in God and doesn't carry over. But most of our anger is nowhere near that. Most of our anger is destructive. Actually, most of our anger builds walls, and that's the thumbnail tonight. It's about building walls that break down relationships. So we grieve the Spirit of God. Then Paul shows us we do that by building these walls. With anger, we give the devil a foothold, which hurts our relationship with God and the relationship with him and each other. And we don't wind up, we don't grow closer to God. We're pushed away. So let me read Ephesians 4, verses 31 and 32. Right after do not grieve the Spirit of God, he says, Let all bitterness and anger and wrath and shouting and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Instead, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, generous, graciously forgiving each other, just as God in Christ Jesus has forgiven you. And we're going to look at verse 32 in more depth tomorrow night. But tonight, notice the image on the screen. We're talking about anger that builds walls. Walls that block us from each other, that block us from God. Not in the sense that God has saved us and kept us, and we always have access to Him. But from the relational standpoint, when we choose to trust ourselves rather than trust God, anger builds those walls. And then he gives us five ways that anger builds, up, builds those walls which break down a relationship with other people and with God. And these five things, where he talks about get rid of bitterness, anger, wrath, shouting, and slander, they're not just five ways of saying the same thing. He's building a progression here. Starting with bitterness. Bitterness is that inner resentful attitude within us. It's the foundation for this destructive anger. It's the foundation for the wall, which is going to block us from God and others, keep us from loving God and others, which is the greatest commandment. So bitterness is the foundation. The second thing is anger, man's anger, the anger that will not produce the righteous life that God desires. And this shows itself in kind of irritated, indignant outbursts. And we may have those internally. Someone may not hear us being angry and bitter, but we are inside, and it impacts us just the same. So bitterness, anger. The third thing is wrath. And the way that the Greek wor works out there is just like a seething, a seething rage. I'm bitter. I won't let it go. I'm, I become angry. I become more frustrated. And then I'm anger to the point I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing wrath. To the point where inside I'm deceiving. Whether we experience, we express that outwardly or inwardly, it's happening to us. I've experienced that. 
You've experienced that. Paul is warning us against it. And then last, then the fourthly, is the shouting. Some translations will say brawling, and brawling is a good application of it. But actually, where the voice gets louder, and we become more frustrated. And then this is where abuse comes in. Loud, abusive language. Unrestrained language. Possibly cursing. Paul is saying, don't do that. This is building up something. This is what you've got to get rid of. And then lastly is slander. And if it was if re referencing to God, it would be blasphemous. But when referencing humans, slander here means an attack on someone's character, where they're demeaned, where they're belittled. And that's what anger is. The wall has reached its top level there, and we've seen the fruit of that wall become so thick that we can't break through it. So Paul is saying, get rid of all malice. Be done with those things. Root them out. Because these walls, they may, be, they may seem good to us to protect ourselves. All it does is just bring more destruction to us because it keeps us from really knowing God more deeply. So just to recap, unrestrained anger builds walls between you and other people, between you and God. And this provides the foothold, the beachhead for the devil to wage war against you. And the final product is broken relationships. When we mistrust each other, we mistrust God. So Paul is putting a lot of weight here. The Holy Spirit is putting a lot of weight on the danger of anger. And these five components that build this wall step by step where it's almost impenetrable. That's what God wants to protect us from. So he says, get rid of it. And how do we do that? Be kind. Be gracious. Be tenderhearted. And that's tomorrow night. So this is the put off tonight. Get rid of anger in all of its forms and replace it with the kindness of God. And we'll look deeply at uh, verse 32 tomorrow. Thank you for being here. Uh, again, love your comments and feedback. So grateful for this opportunity to spend time with you each day. You have a good evening. Good night. Thank you for watching. May God richly bless you as you seek to live for His glory.